Welcome back to my channel. Happy New Year. Happy 2020. New Year, new me. Okay, I'm just kidding. Oh my goodness, it's been a very, very long time since I recorded something. And I figured last year, right around this time, I don't know, those who are loyal to my five videos that I have on my channel, you'd remember that last year around this time, I recorded a vision board video for my channel. And I figured new year, this is when people make all these goals and resolutions. And um, I think it's just around the right time for me to go ahead and do a follow up of how my vision board for 2019 turned out. So, hello, <laughs> hi, darling. Is she, is it a fiance? Is it a wife? <laughs> oh man, okay, we'll start with the obvious. Man. Is married, y'all. Anyways, so 2019, when I recorded my vision board um, recording video, whatever, I was in Rhode Island. I was in East Providence, Rhode Island. I had moved out there for a job. Um, companies shall remain anonymous. So I have moved out there. It was a promotion, actually. So I kind of moved from Memphis, Tennessee back to... No, not back. I moved out of Memphis, Tennessee to Rhode Island to further my career with this particular company. Um, things didn't go well. Things didn't end well. And to be honest with you, I was very, very, very unhappy with that company. Very unhappy with where I was. I didn't like Rhode Island. I was by myself, 12 hours away from my parents in Chicago, 22 hours away from Memphis, worlds apart from my then boyfriend. And oh my goodness, like, yeah, I was, I was alone. I was having withdrawals. I was, I was craving sense of touch from just family and friends and loved ones, you know, so to be honest with you, I would never ever do it again. I don't think I'll ever move that far away from family and loved ones. It, it was rough. So when I did that recording, my vision board recording last year in January, I was unemployed. That company and I decided to part ways December 31st. What a way to go into a new year. Yeah, we decided to part ways December 31st. So while everybody was like, yeah, happy new year, 2019. I was in bed in tears, crying, not knowing my next move, what I was going to do. I'm so far away from family and friends. I do not want to move back home into my parents' home because, well, you know, you're grown, you're an adult. And my dad was just like, once you move out, if you come back, you have failed. So... <laughs> So I did not want to go back to my parents. I just wanted a way. Like I was just like, God, I know I said I was unhappy and I kept on doing a countdown until my contract was over over there. Like, man, I was a warehouse or you could call it operations supervisor at that time. Never been a manager. And I was over here talking about, hmm, I'm going to be a manager. Hmm, sipping my tea. Do y'all remember that? I'm going to have to add that clip, like that part here. So yeah i have the manager placard there because hmm who knows i might be a manager soon i'm just saying i'm a boss so i remained unemployed all of january all of february the beginning of march i was like look god i don't know what but this rhode island thing here or massachusetts ain't working out for me I'm about to move back to Memphis, Tennessee. Mind you, no job. But you know what? My field, logistics, transportation, you know, supply chain is booming here in Memphis, Tennessee. So yeah, I moved back to Memphis, Tennessee. This is where I am now. Moved to Memphis, Tennessee with no job, no direction, 
but I had this house that was here. I just wanted to make sure if I was making a move, my, my, my moves had to be in line with God. So I had to listen to God like, okay, God, I'm going to these interviews here in Rhode Island, but nothing is, it's just not, it's not, it's not, yes. So I moved to Memphis, no job, no direction, no idea how I'm going to do it. So I pack all my stuff. I call my cousin in Chicago like, yo, I need your help to move. So this is my cousin Zulu. Shout out to you. I'll never forget what he did for me. We make that drive back down 20 something plus hours here. So here I am. Now I'm applying to all the jobs here in Memphis. And, you know, I get some interviews, some I don't get. And so anyways, in this one day, quote, I mean, swear on everything. My mother tells me, you know, we're praying on this job because I, I don't have a job, right? I don't have a job. Shoot. I broke my lease in Rhode Island and they like, if we don't find somebody to replace you, you're just going to have to keep paying even though you're not here, period. So I'm hoping, praying to God, look, I need a job, God. I need someone to sublease my apartment, God. I'm just asking a lot of God at the moment, you know? <laughs> and my mother tells me, my mother in South Africa... As we're praying and asking for this, she texts me this one day, literally this one weekend. She goes to me, you know what? You will not make it till March. I want to say March 12th or was it 11th? So that, that week, that week of 11, 12, let's say 11, I think. She texts me the weekend before. She goes, you won't make it to March 11th without getting an interview and getting and securing a job, basically. I'm like, praise God, mom, I received those blessings, you know. And tell me why I'm spending a weekend with my man and I get a call that we would love to, um, you know, interview you. Are you willing to come for an interview? Da -da -da -da. I'm like, when you want me to come? Of course, I'm available. T what? I make it down there now. Skirt. Pull up in Memphis in eight hours, seven hours, eight hours, whatever. And they said, no, we want to interview March 11th. I go, God, quit playing. But I got So, anyways, I make it down back. What's between March 11th and March 12th? Man, I got to remember exactly what day it was. But I'll, I'll tell you, and I'll probably put the text that my mother sent me here. So you can see I'm not playing, I'm not making this up. Swear. I make it back down, wake up that morning, go for an interview, and I interviewed for a transportation supervisor position with this company, McLean, the company I work for now. Praise God, they want to give me the position. You know what I mean? They offer me the position. Um, it takes a little while for them to like fully, fully offer me the position because they want references from a previous company. Tell me why my previous company was acting bogus, did not want to answer no calls, no emails, no nothing, was not trying to give them no, re you know, no review on me. But that's cool, but I got, got me, because I'm God's child, okay? So, um, they finally get a review, shout out to, he knows, that manager that came out for me, you know, thank you for answering a call and everything um they finally get a review a reference um from my previous company and they're like oh, okay like we really want her so i get hired for a transportation supervisor position and i wanted transportation because i had done warehouse you know um for a little while and i'm like let's just take a different take at supply chain let's go transportation wise okay girl Oh, girl, now I got to go do her drug test, you know. And I'm like, girl, you could drug test me any given day. Wake me up in the middle of the night. Be like, I need you to pee in a cup. And, you know, oh, girl, don't do no drugs. So, mm, we clean over here. I wake up one morning, getting ready, shower, singing my praises, and thanking God for this job offer because Lord knows I need it. And they paying good bread. I'm talking to you. I'm telling you better money than I was getting paid up in Rhode Island and I'm in the south cost of living is cheaper tell me that ain't God anyways I shower I get ready go to um to the job pull up over there to get the information that I need for my drug tests um 
I'm all dressed and everything. I go outside, pick up my keys, go outside, you know, lift up the garage from hop in the car real quick and whoop the woo, you know what I mean? My car is gone. The car that I'm supposed to use to go do the drug test to satisfy, solidify everything, this job, the car is not there. The same car that I'm supposed to use to go to and fro, to and from, from work to home, from home to work, is not there. <gasps> the devil tried it, okay? Now, I'm broke. I haven't been working for three months, so guess what? My car note, be, you know, behind. That don't represent the car. <laughs> oh, I was wounded. Luckily, my auntie was here on that morning, and literally, I came back in the house. I run into her room. I go, auntie, the car is gone, <sighs> and dropped to the floor in tears. It wasn't so much that it was the car. It was the matter of fact that my way of, you know, mobility is not there, and I just got blessed with a job. This is the devil really trying to stir the pot. My auntie goes, okay, okay, okay. I know you're crying. I know you're hurt. But girl, let's get you to the job so you can go ahead and do the drug test. And we'll figure that out later. So, oh girl, Ubers me. Praise God for having my auntie. Like, when things always go left, she's always there. Woo. She Ubers me real quick to the job. I get there, get the paperwork. She Ubers me back to, to the clinic wherever I had to do the drug test at, she Ubers me from there home. We get home. Now I gotta tell my mother in South Africa that I lost my job. Not that I quit, really. Cause my dad was just like, I got you, okay? My mother was like, I got you. Like, what do you need? When do you need it kind of thing? I was just like, oh, I thought you were from the yell at me. Well, I didn't come to you sooner. Uh, no, that was not the case. So my mother comes through for me. She's like, okay, you have the money in your bank account. Tomorrow morning, 8 a.m., sharp, pronto, you wake up, Uber to go get it at Walmart, money gram it, and then go ahead and pay, you know, your car and go and Uber to go get the car. So that gets done. Woo! Can I shout right now? That gets done. I go do that in the morning, go get my car. I look at my car like, baby, they tried it. God. Y'all, I'm not even crying now because I just have so much joy and happiness. Like, this is grace all over my life. Like, unmerited, unearned, undeserving grace over my life right now. So, I get my car back and we're good. I don't owe a dollar for them at the moment, right? Because obviously the next month will be a different case. But you know, old girl's gonna be Gucci. Because she got a job. Okay, okay. We get paid every two weeks. So I knew I was going to be able to stay afloat from then on forward. So the next two weeks go by. I start my orientation with that job. So old girl is a transportation supervisor for McLean. McLean is a Warren Buffett company. If you don't know who Warren Buffett is, look him up. Our company is debt free. You hear me? So I go in there, first day of orientation, my boss calls me into the office. Cool. He calls me. Um, how's the orientation going? Orientation going well. Da, da, da. This is the GM of the company, mind you. Orientation's going well. Whoop the whoop the whoop. You know, thank you so much. Like, he doesn't know how much he has just blessed me right now. He doesn't know. No clue. No clue how thankful and grateful I am. I go into my manager's office and um, we sit there and he goes to me, well, listen, I know you got hired for a supervisor position, a transportation supervisor position here, but at the moment, we actually have an opening for a customer service manager position. So I'm sitting there like, okay, let me hear you out. So yeah, customer service, you know, uh, manager position opened up and this is what you would do. Shares with me like the job, bleh, bleh, bleh. 
shares with me the job description, the hours, what is expected of me, so on and so forth, the pay and all of that, right? And so my question is like, okay, if I get into this, it's like, you know, it's an operation, but not really. It's taking me away from warehousing and transportation, you know, if I, you know, probably don't like it or want to switch up later on in life within the company, would I be able to go back to transportation or warehouse if I want? He goes, yeah, 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 sure. You know, this is not a closed door, you know, that's it. You can no longer move stone, written in stone and set kind of thing. I say, cool, but give me a moment. Let me go home. Let me go discuss with my family and those that matter to me, right? So I finish off orientation and he's just like, you know, just think about it. Don't say anything until you've thought about it and come back to me and let me know. So I go home later on that day after orientation. I talk to my dad. I talk to my mom. You know, I talk to my mama and I talk to my man and I'm like, this is what's happened. This is what's said. And this is the opportunity that presented itself. What do you guys think? You know, so we run it through, run it through, run it through, run it through. And your girl is a customer service manager. Run it back. Yo girl, this girl, this girl right here. As a customer service manager for McLean Food Service. Okay, so let's go back to January. When I was unemployed and I said I would be a manager. Tell me God ain't good. Tell me God ain't good. So that was just a blessing in disguise. God qualifies the unqualified. Did you hear me? I was not qualified to be a manager of any sort, never been. Supervisor, yes, you know, I still report to a manager, right? But wow, I ended up being a manager after speaking it and praying about it for three and a half months. I get a job and I get a job that tells me that I'm a manager. If that ain't God all over, written all over, I don't know. And you telling me you still haven't done your vision board and prayed over it? Okay, let me continue. Now that's not the only greatest thing that's happened to me for the year of 2019. So I go from girlfriend to fiance to wife in one year. And that was on my vision board. I go from being unemployed to having a job. A manager job. And you still haven't done your vision board. I'll wait. But I mean, seriously, like putting God first and just praying over everything that I prayed over um, on my vision board. You know, the only thing that I haven't been doing faithfully is uploading YouTube channels <laughs> and um, eating very healthy and being fit and continuously like being consistent with going to the gym. Those two things I didn't do very well, but we have plans for it this year. We have major plans. As of right now, as I speak, I'm not eating meat, period. I'm trying this whole healthy thing. Let's see what meat does for me. And I naturally have a lot of energy by not eating meat. Um, it's just working out perfect for me. So, like, I want to share a few key pointers with you. So, the thing about a vision board, your vision has to be in line with God's vision. I have a couple of notes on my phone, and that's why I'm looking at it. Your vision has to be in line with God's vision. You cannot just write things down and, and put it on your vision board and just be like, this is what I want, period, period. No, it has to be in line with what God wants for your life. It really has to be. Um, God's the visionary and we're the willing vessel and the vision has to come from the visionary. The visionary gave a vision to the willing vessel being me I am not the coach. I am not. I'm just the player, the ordained player. You hear me? Um, so I get the play from the visionary being God. God is just like, you know, I hear what you want, 
but how about what I want for you? Because I know I'm all knowing because my ways are greater than your ways. And with using your vision, your the sight that we're given, it limits us. You know, I could have just been like, you know what, I'm just gonna be a supervisor. This is all I know, and this is what I'm worth. But God was just like, I got greater, I got better, I have more for you, Laura. Why settle when you could have more? Why put yourself here when you're here? And I, I'm humbled, don't get me wrong, very, very humble. Every time I think about where I am now and how my year started off last year, I just see God all over it. I mean, every single thing that I prayed for, day in and day out, I needed a job. I didn't just want one. I needed one. And God came through for me. I cannot stress this enough. Like, I almost am getting teary-eyed and about to cry because it's hard. Your car gets repossessed. You have to move. And mind you, did I... I forgot to tell you that I didn't have to pay a dime for that apartment that I left in Rhode Island because as soon as I left, they found someone to sublease my apartment. Matter of fact, months down the line, I got a check from them, a check from them saying this was your deposit. We took off a, a hundred or two because of the holes that you didn't put in the wall when you were putting up your pictures and your curtains. But they ran me a check. I got an unexpected check in my mailbox. If that ain't God, I don't know who. Because none of this was anything that I planned. None of it was all me. None. None of it was all God. I prayed over and over and over again over every item that was on my vision board. And God was just like, on some of those things, like you wanted to go on a cruise, baby, we gonna wait. <laughs> that cruise didn't happen last year, but maybe it'll happen this year. This year, I'll just add things to that vision board. I will pull some things off and add some things to the vision board. You know, I'll cover some things, add different things, because this year I have different things that I want. And I'm not going to do a whole vision board and share it with you guys again but i just want you guys to understand the importance of having a vision board and having a vision over your life you just can't wake up every day and be like wherever the wind blows you just can't you know um and listen what says where there is no vision the people perish this is not something i'm making up this is proverbs 28 and 18. god says where there is no vision my people perish you can't just live life just waking up and going to sleep and waking up and going to sleep and doing it again and just, it just doesn't work that way. And this is Habakkuk and I have it on my vision board as well. It says, vision must be visible for one. Writing it here is not enough. Write it down on paper, put it on a vision board. Do a vision board, a digital vision board and put it on your phone as your screensaver. You know what I mean? Where you see it every day, it should be visible, it should be right there. If you're putting post-it notes all over your bathroom mirror, let it be that, okay? And then also, write your vision and make it plain. Anyone should be able to come into your life, anyone should be able to come in here, grab my vision board and know exactly what Laura desires. Grab my vision board and know what's, what's the wants and needs that I have, what I'm praying over. It's there, it's plain and simple. It's not complicated, it's visible. Therefore, it is, you know what I mean? And God makes a way out of no way. I can't say this enough. I didn't share where I felt like, oh, I don't know. And God's just like, you don't, but I do. And having faith, you can't just write it just to write it. You have to have faith when you write it instead of just, you know, just having it there. Have faith. I had to have just a mustard, a mustard, mustard seed of faith is all that God asks of us. A mustard seed. And a girl had a whole bottle of mustard. Okay, mustard sauce. But God says, I just require you to have a mustard seed of faith. That's it. And while you're praying and just on your knees crying and 
crying out to me. And praise and worship is important because when praises go up, what comes down? Blessings come down. Okay? So all everything is just in line. Everything is just in line. And and this is another thing. God is not looking for the vision to be perfect. The vision has to be vast. You cannot tell what my God, you cannot tell me what my God cannot do. Period, boo. And I'm going to leave this one here. This is it. It's the last thing I'm going to say. Vision is a verb. If your vision does have no, does not have any action behind it, child. God, I want to lose weight. I'm going to put it on my vision board and help me lose weight. What you got to do to lose weight? Do your part and God's going to meet you. God, I want to gain weight. I'm so skinny and I'm so tired of folks calling me skinny because, you know, the next time somebody says I'm skinny, I'm going to tell them how fat they are. But, Laura, what are you doing to try and gain weight? Really, what are you trying to do? So, but we just have to remember in all of that as well, do not tell everyone your vision. Nah, you can't tell everybody. Be careful who you tell your vision to. The vast vision doesn't have to be shared. This is the issue that we have. People will try to kill it before it, be, it comes to pass. You sharing visions, it's not necessary. Your vision does not need validation from anybody, period. It doesn't. You don't need validation for your visions. And they are not the ones that gave it to you. The people that you're sharing it with, they ain't the ones that gave it to you. You just ask that your visions be in line with God's. Your wants and your needs and what you have in mind for your life. I ask this every day. Let it be in line with what you want for me, God. And if it is not what you want for me, God, let me know. Let me be obedient enough to hear you while you tell me that this is not what you want for me. And also, God will let will tell you when to share your vision. He'll tell you when. Wait till God starts unfolding it. Do not kill it in seed form. Your vision is big, but it has to live, okay? Just let that sink in. Sometimes you have these things that you just want to share with your close friends, but sometimes your close friends are not in your corner and they do not want that for you. Not everybody that you're close with needs to know your moves before they actually be. You know how people on social media be like, silent moves, silent moves. I'm all for it. Silent moves for real. I'm not on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, nothing. None of that. Because silent moves for real, okay? Um, it just works better. I have better peace of mind. I do not have to deal with a lot of, girl, you ain't gonna be able to do that. Who you think you is? And you know, changing and swifting and moving my vision to be in line with what I see on social media either. You know what I mean? And so, but just do not kill your vision while it's still brewing. It's in seed form. It has to be planted, closed, watered on the daily. Let it grow. And the people will see it. They don't need you to tell them about your vision while you're still watering it. They can't see it. But what they can do is trample all over where you have placed your seed. You know, move that seed up and get it up from under the ground. And therefore, that seed will never flourish. But what I'm saying is, you know, if you're just praying like, God, oh, I cannot wait to get married. Sometimes your friends are not in your corner. Sometimes your friends don't feel like you should be getting married. Some of them will tell you, oh, you're moving too fast. Y'all doing this too soon. Because, child, I heard that too. That's too fast. Didn't y'all just start dating? Don't you have to date for like five, ten years? Before, not ten years, but five years before you really know he's the one? Y'all ain't even living together. How you gonna know you want to marry him before you live with him? Well, honey, some of us do not want to cohabitate before we get married. And that's okay. Well, I gotta test drive the car before I actually buy it, meaning living with them. That's okay. That's you. That's not me. On top of that, my parents would never have that, never have that one. <laughs> not happening. Not in this lifetime. Not as long as my parents are living. Not happening. <laughs>
but i hope you guys have understood what i'm trying to say i hope you guys are motivated to start this vision board this year get it started you know you may have not done it january 1st or 2nd or 3rd or 4th or 5th but it's never too late to go ahead and put that vision onto paper put that vision on your phone put that vision as your screensaver put that vision on your mirrors in your bedroom in your bathroom put that vision somewhere visible where anybody can walk in and actually touch and agree with you and pray over your vision and as for me right now, I am praying that everybody that gets this vision board thing going right now or already has one in place, I ask the God, I ask for God to meet you at your point of need. I ask God to actually have every vision that you have placed on your vision board to come to pass, God. And I just hope that they're in line with God's vision. Let it be more of him and less of us as we continue doing these vision boards and as we go forward. I am not a pastor, I am not a motivational speaker, I am not all of that, but I do know what works for me and I hope it works for you guys. Bye! Ciao now!